How do you discover all the parts of yourself? Let's talk about how to find all of your subpersonalities right now. I'm totally a fun manager. You certainly manage a certain kind of fun. The easiest way to find parts of yourself is just to go through life and figure it out as you go. What we are touching on today are ideas of what you can do to tap in and figure out your internal family so that you can live your life in harmony and balance. When you're just getting started, it can be really difficult though. So I think the easiest thing to do is to put them into categories and then you can figure out, oh yeah, there's parts of me that fit into this category. It makes it a lot easier. The internal family systems model or IFS model uses three categories and I'm going to share those with you, but stick around to the end because we're going to talk about other ways to interpret these. When we're exploring this, I want you to think about how you can use your intuitive abilities, your natural intuitive gifts to sort of tune into these parts of you. You might see a part. What does it look like? What's it wearing? What gender is it? How old is it? You might tune into a physical feeling in your body. You might hear that inner dialogue, this voice versus this voice. What's the difference between the voices? So your experience will be unique depending on your natural skill set. The first category are managers. This is a huge topic, huge topic. Managers can cover basically anything from your basic survival needs. Do you need to eat? Do you need to sleep? There are also managers that keep you on task, let you know what you need to do, keep your calendar in your head, know what you need for your grocery list. You might have parts of yourself that manage your goals or parts that tell you, you need a break, let's go have fun. Sounds fabulous, right? But have you ever experienced a manager in your day-to-day -day life that is extra stress, has too much burden, managing too many tasks. Maybe one of your managers has turned into a workaholic because they are obsessed with making sure you get that done. Or a part that's completely burned out because it didn't even wanna be a manager in the first place. I don't wanna clean, I just want a break. Managers have fantastic intentions, they protect us. They don't always protect us in the same way. Maybe one of your managers wants to protect you in this way and another wants to do in this way and they're conflicting. Okay, perfect example, me right now. Right now, in this moment, I'm starving. I am so hungry. And there's a part of myself that's like, it's time to eat. But then there's another part of myself that's like, hey, let's go, there's a lot to do here. My one part knows I need to get some food because I need to survive. But another part knows that I just need to quickly finish this recording and then it will be so much easier if I get it done now. Again, all fantastic goals. They are trying to protect us. But who exactly are they trying to protect? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Right now, I just want you to think about what managers might you have in your life. And here's a few questions that you can think to help get that ball rolling. What are some of your basic survival needs? We obviously all need to eat and sleep and things like that. Is there one part that manages everything about your body? Or maybe each of your body parts has its own kind of sub-personality reaching out for you when it needs some help. Next, what are some things at home in your home life that you need to keep track of? How does your calendar get filled out? How do you know when to keep appointments? Do you have certain chores that need to get done? If you have kids, what parts of you are present when you're with your kids? And same questions when you're with some friends. Are there different parts of you that show up when you're with one friend versus another? Maybe there's a group of people that really bring out one side of you and another group of people that bring out a completely different side of you. Those are parts of you. And then at work, who shows up at work? Are you really driven and ambitious and get things done? Do you maybe not like your job? What parts are present when you show up and what parts are needed to get the job done? And next, how do you manage your free time? What are your hobbies and interests and things that you enjoy doing? Are there different sides of you that like lots of different types of activities? For every activity that you enjoy, there might be a different part of you associated with that. And now what about the parts of you that have ideas about what you're supposed to do or supposed to be? Is there a critic or a coach? Is there a family belief system of we are supposed to do this? We are supposed to be this. You can also discover parts by looking at what you don't like doing. What parts of you are managing if you still have to do it, even though you don't want to? So feel free to pause this video now before we move on to the next category if you want to take some more time figuring out some of your managers. So the next category of parts in this model of therapy is called firefighters. Imagine this, a crisis is happening and somebody grabs a giant fire hose and just all over the situation, what's gonna happen? Well, you're probably gonna be so distracted that you have no idea what just happened and that crisis is averted in a way. And if the firefighters come out a lot, you might be conditioned to not go into that crisis anymore. 
What counts as a crisis? Basically anything, but usually it's when a strong emotion, a past trauma, or something is happening within you that some part of you, likely a manager, has determined, nope, we're not going to do that. We're not going to deal with that. It's a very effective technique. Okay, so you obviously don't have a giant fire hose that you're squirting in your face every time you think of something. So what is actually going on here? This group is really talking about parts of you that use extreme measures to divert your attention. And a lot of these techniques are pretty self-destructive. For example, pretty much any addictive behavior can be seen as a firefighter. One addictive tendency like your morning coffee might not seem like it's a giant dramatic fire hose, but that caffeine is actually forcing your body into another state when you're trying to tell yourself that you're tired. And that's totally fine until it's not anymore. And then there can be more obvious self-destructive behaviors like drugs and alcohol or sex addiction, excessive spending or gambling, and even love addiction. All of these addictive behaviors and many more do wonderful things to distract you from whatever is going on. Whoa, why am I in here? I'm totally a fun manager. You definitely manage a certain kind of fun. Tell me more about how you manage fun. It can be kind of tricky finding these types of parts of us because they're so good at distracting us. That's the complete intention of what they're supposed to do. So they have ways of hiding their behavior or convincing us that it's really helpful or fun. And going back to managers, you also might have some managers that manage the way you see these firefighters because they both have the same goal. They want to protect. So I want to share some questions that might prompt you to think about what your firefighters are, but I want to add a disclaimer here. This might be triggering for you, so please skip ahead if you think this isn't a good idea for you right now. So number one, if you're already aware of some self-destructive behaviors that you have, what are they? Let's be honest about it. What are the parts that are associated with those behaviors? Another way to tap into this is to think about any parts of yourself that might be the, hey, hey, just one more drink, it's fine. Right now, yeah, just have that midnight snack, it's okay. Oh, it's on sale, come on, just do it. What are those parts that are saying things like that? How old are they? What do they look like? What's their agenda? And how about the opposite kind of firefighters? Firefighters that completely disengage. That idea of a fire hose does not have to be dramatic. It could be a numbing, completely removing yourself from a situation. So are there times where you do that kind of thing? Are there certain situations where you're just not present? What are those situations and what part of you is sort of taking care of that for you? You can also find some of these heavy distractors by tuning in to a strong emotion that you have. So thinking about that emotion really aligning with it, and this can definitely be triggering, so be careful here. And then see what happens next. What are you urged to do? To really make this effective in this exploration, you have to make sure it's a really strong emotion that you're gonna try to distract yourself from. So it's definitely advised to not do this alone if you're not sure if you can kind of come back to yourself. The next category of parts used in IFS is called exiles. That name is particularly triggering for me, so I don't like to use it, but I understand the concept and where it came from. Exiles got their name because they've been shunned from the light. These are parts of yourself that your managers and firefighters have said, nope, we don't want you here. We can't have you here. There's too much pain. There's too many memories. You're not supposed to do that or feel that. We were told you're not supposed to do or feel that. These could be parts of you that represent trauma or feel the trauma of a situation in your past. They can also be parts of you that represent expectations from family or society or your culture. The rest of you has determined they're not allowed to have a voice in that inner dialogue. They are just shunned out of there. You can definitely try to figure out what some of your exiled parts are. I've done that myself, but I definitely would recommend working with somebody else on this because it can be very triggering. Obviously, they're exiled because the rest of you has determined that it's not safe so if you were going to attack this on your own, it might be really, really jarring to your whole system. Also, unless something's ready to open up, your managers and your firefighters will probably not let them come out for you to explore anyway. If you don't work with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, that's completely fine though, because they can kind of come out naturally when you're ready in your life. When you work with your managers and your firefighters, it allows that space for that part of yourself that has been shunned to come out. Okay, so now that we've talked about all three of these categories, I have to say something. The categories don't really matter. They only matter if it's helpful for you to think about them. I actually don't think about it at all when I do any of my parts work, but it is 
really helpful to think about that when you're trying to find the different parts of you. For me, it's easiest to look at each individual and to discover what their intentions are, their desires, what they look like, experience, etc. And I don't try to fit them into a category because just how I work intuitively, it just doesn't work for me, but it might really work for you. If you stuck with me this far, you might be feeling overwhelmed or lost or think I'm completely crazy. What do you do now? How are you supposed to find harmony and balance in all of this mess? Well, that's a question for another time. On the next parts video, we're gonna talk about where you are in all of this. You have all the parts of you. Now, where are you and what do you do to work with this? So I'll see you there. I'm a failure, I can't do anything right. And done, next on the list. Go, 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 go. Hi. I'm not qualified for any, why would anybody want me? Do, 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 do.